What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from BackMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And this is a TV review. This is Land of Women. I watched the first two episodes and because I was all the dropped, we're going to talk about it. This does have audio description. I believe it's Jedediah Barton and I'm thinking that because I literally finished Dark Matter and then launched Land of Women and I'm like, oh my god, it's the same narrator. Um, so I think it's Jedediah Barton. Uh, anyway, this is Eva Longoria's new show. So, it's being built as a limited. It's only six episodes. It feels like it could be more. I don't know what they're doing here. I thought that they were going to just expand upon, um, iTunes's, like, Latina brand, Latinx brand, which they have sort of like Acapulco, but they don't really have more than them. <laughs> like, they need kind of, like, more than that. Like, it seems like Acapulco's doing well for them. So I just, I thought maybe they were going to team up with Eva Longoria and be like, do you want to do a show? Cool. So apparently I've already watched, like, a third of the program. Whatevs. It does kind of feel like a movie. It feels like this would be a movie uh, that could have been broken down into episodes. It'd just be really long because these episodes are like 45 minutes. So when you get six of them together, it, this is not a genre of film, that, a, genre, a genre when it made into a film would be that length. It's, it's more of a rom-com uh, than it is anything else. So, Eva Longoria plays the, uh, a wealthy sort of, um, socialite-ish woman who has, uh, I think a gallery or something. She, uh, people, uh, she's apparently really good with wine. Uh, it's not a hundred percent clear, but there's, cause they're celebrating the opening of something at the beginning of the film and she shows up and... And she's like, oh my god, are you the caterers? When she finds out these one people. So she's clearly launching whatever it is that she does, which seems to be wine. Like there's a friend that comes over to her and they talk about wine. And they're like, well, you're the one that always knows about wine. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I did kind of lose that thread. I was like, I don't know what she does. And then later on, we're on sort of like, in when we, anyway, when we get there, uh, Another, there's more stuff that supports that she's that a wine expert, uh, of some kind. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how you get to be a wine expert. I think she was just wealthy and <laughs> drank a lot of wine, and somebody was like, You should totally, <laughs> you know. Um, but her husband is also like a businessman that theoretically makes money. Apparently not, because uh, he ends up sort of bailing on her. He's a little worried about their money situation, and uh, he just kind of dips, which is really disconcerting because he also has a daughter. He absolutely knows the fate of his family in this. This is not a good look for, I don't know where we're going to go, but... Uh, she is way too forgiving of the husband at the beginning of this. She's, like, way too trusting. He's like, I need you to trust me. And I was like, I don't trust you at all. Like, you're just, like, piecing out on your own. You're not even fleeing with your family. You're fleeing from your family. This cannot be good. Um, but he owes people, he owes bad people money. And the bad people are coming to collect. And the bad people find Eva Longoria at her event and they threaten her instantaneously, even though it's clear that she has absolutely no idea what they're talking about. This is the dumbest thing. This is one of the dumbest parts of this thing is they're just like, if you don't get us the money in 48 hours, we're going to kill your daughter. I'm like, first of all, you haven't even really explained what the fuck is going on. <laughs> she, she definitely doesn't know who you are. Like her reaction to this is so bizarrely comedic that... You're just, I can't believe, I can't believe that real henchmen in this kind of situation would take this approach to trying to get the money back. Like this, it, and out in the open too, by the way, in this event where like anyone could hear or see them, like they could easily be marked later on 
it's like witnesses everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, <laughs> they didn't do this in like a private place. They didn't break into her apartment. They instead approached her at her event with her other people. So, um, very weird. I, I, I that did kind of be like, I was like, are these guys dumb? Are we, are these like, are we going to go the inept r route here with these guys and these bumbling idiots? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, she like, she's like, I'm, I'm out, you know? So she swings by and picks up her daughter, Kate. Uh, actually she picks up her mom first, Julia, uh, at a nursing home. And, uh, Julia speaks almost entirely in Spanish. Now I'll tell you at the beginning of the show, you'll get a voice that says the show is presented in its original language. I don't know why we needed that because the show's definitely bilingual. Like Eva spends, Eva's not very good at, at speaking Spanish and her daughter is not consistent in speaking Spanish for sure. The mother is, uh, the mother does speak pretty much predominantly in Spanish. Um, especially when they get to Spain, uh, her homeland. So, uh, She's, it, it, but it gets a part of the audio description. We do get dubbing when they do speak it. However, there's also a significant amount of the series that's not in Spanish. Eva obviously did not study in her, her character does not fluently. She struggles finding words. Like she'll speak until she f doesn't remember the word. And then she'll just start speaking in English. So... Don't be, don't be thrown by that. Don't think you're about to watch like Squid Game. You know, this is not, this is not deeply. The whole thing is not in Spanish. As a matter of fact, it's not in Spanish really until they get to Spain. Uh, there's a little bit of Spanish with, because when she meets her, um, when she goes and gets her mother, like I said, her mother speaks predominantly Spanish, no matter where she is. So for the most part, yeah, there's that. Um, but it, they also have to pick up Kate at college and Kate has a girlfriend, Marga, uh, who we, I think it's Marga. Anyway, it's, it's, it's hard because Margo's not a main character. Margo's given screen time though, which is actually kind of amazing and insinuating that I think we will see and hear more from Margo later on down the line. But, um, yeah, so Kate has to leave her girlfriend behind. She doesn't even know she's leaving her girlfriend behind. Her Basically, her mom is just sweeping them away to Spain, um, like, on a whim. She's like, we need to get the hell out of here. She's got, like, money strapped around her body. Uh, the, she was able to, like, pawn off some art and stuff like that so she can get some cash and get the hell out of town. Uh, but she wants to get the two people who these, you know, mafiosa types might actually try to go kill and uh, get them and pull them. She doesn't know where the hell her husband went. Her husband's like, I don't know, gone, Bora Bora or something, I don't know. Um, and they head out to Spain and there's a reference. Uh, she finds a picture of her mom sort of back when she was younger in this small town in Spain. And she's like, oh God, we'll go there because her mom is like, oh yeah, that was my house. Uh, it's my, my sister's house. I own half, she owns the other half. So they're like, great, we own half this house in Spain. Excellent. We can go live in this. They, nobody's going to track this. These guys are not that smart to follow us all the way to Spain to a house that is owned 50% by the, <laughs> the mother of Eva Longoria. Um, that is pretty, it's a pretty good leap on their part. So the daughter is swept along with the grandmother and they are in Spain. And uh, none of the credit cards work. She basically only has the cash that's strapped around her body. She can't rent a car because they need a credit card on file for purposes, just in case something happens to the car. She can't just give cash. Um, she has enough cash she could just buy a car. Uh, so I know she doesn't want to blow that much cash, but you do have it. Uh, she should be able to buy a sustainable car for her like stay in, I would say that's a solid investment would be to buy a decent car. She buys a really horrific car that she can't drive because she can't drive manual. 
So, <laughs> it's just, which leads her to a car accident with a guy who ends up becoming a huge part to the rest of the series because, lo and behold, they don't actually still own that house. This dude lives in this house, and he also, they just piss him off because he lost all these grapes that came off of his this winery, and, uh, and then he seems to be a fairly nice guy, and there are ma many references to him being attractive, so it's obviously going to set up this potential romance between Eva Longoria and this guy, although they start off hating each other, like most romantic comedies, <laughs> you know. They're incompatible until they're compatible. Um, and Julia, there's, uh, she is right at home. Like, there's some people that she remembers. Uh, there's a guy that remembers her. Uh, and her sister does live in town, but did sell the house. But uh, there's drama with that as to how, like, you can't sell a house. It's not entirely yours. And so... They don't fully, like, resolve these things, and I'm not trying to spoil the entire series for you. Most of what I've told you is episode one stuff, so, um, it's just enough setup to get you going. So, they live in Spain now, for the time being, for six episodes. Um, poor Kate uh, and her girlfriend, we do see that her, that the uh, henchmen arrive at what I guess would be Kate's dorm, um... And Margot's there and she answers in a towel, which is like so weird because like who let them in? First of all, if she feels comfortable enough answering the towel, answering the door in a towel, like she's probably in a girl's dorm. And you're telling me that there's like, like two people were like, oh yeah, these two giant hulking, one dude's got a neck tattoo. And they're like, yeah, this feels right. <laughs> like nobody's. I don't think these guys John wicked their way to the to the bedroom and killed everybody in the hallway or anything like that just to get to the door. Um, I just don't feel like that that's the thing. That, who, who stopped them? Like, there's some things here that were, I kept asking questions. I was like, yeah, there's some stuff that keep the show from being like, oh my god, this is perfect and revolutionary and I love her. It's, but it's, it's, it has a charm. It's delightful. Um, it has some stuff that uh, you'll explore with Margot in the second episode that I was uh, interested and surprised. And I was like, okay, we're doing this. Okay. I, I'm here for this. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you what it is because uh, I feel like parts of the internet will hate it. I mean, I've already said that she, they're dating. Uh, they're, she's two, they're, it's two girls dating. Um, so you'll find out in the second episode of Margot's backstory. <laughs> I, I was surprised. I was like, ooh, we get to learn more about Margot who didn't go to Spain. I think that that's, that bodes well for her future on the show. <laughs> we usually don't invest in characters that we don't intend on seeing ever again. So, um, the audio description I thought was really well done because it's not one narrator. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Apple Plus. Um, yes, I am I'm absolutely exhausted with foreign language shows that are described by one person and like having to like rank them in sort of like which show did it better. Like I had the shogun way of doing things where it's just like the guy. And he does every voice, including the guys, and the guys and the girls. Like, it is every voice. And he does it all with the same voice that he also narrates with. And it's just like, that show was, it was a great show, but damn. You know, I, I'm sitting here trying to, like, vote for actors and their performances. And I can't vote for anybody, really, because it was so distracting voting for I, the Only the ones that spoke English, really, uh, did I get anything out of their performance, because the dubbing was just the same voice and then conversations between people was getting lost. Franklin did that too, but Franklin oddly used like other narrators, but then it wasn't paying attention to who was talking to who. So we would have like the same conversation with the same person. So the, the voice would bleed. Uh, so it sounded like the same person was talking. And then, uh, 
there was also Tokyo Vice, which has a guy who did really try. He was one voice, and he elevates his pitch. So he tries to play different characters and speak at different characters. I'm a new character. No, I'm a new character. No, I'm a new character. Like, he's always trying to find, like, a new pitch for, like, the next character. Um, so that was, you know, and I, I'm glad that we just went and just said, you know what? Let's get, let's get more people in here. So, um, we do have what sounds like at least a female voice <laughs> trying to do at least pitch changes between the females. <laughs> I think it's one female voice. Um, and, uh, because I think, uh, Jedediah, I think does the male narration. Anyway, so he has to do both the primary narration and then also translate for the males. So, yes, I think this is it. Anyway, I don't know. It tried to push me into it like another show. Like it was like you must want to watch the Al Acapulco, and I was like, "There's a reason I stopped watching that in season one, and it's in like season three. So no, actually, I, I don't want to watch Acapulco Apple Plus. Uh, I actually kind of wanted to see the credits to this. That would have been nice. Thank you. So anyway. I will give Land of Women a B plus. I think it's pretty much, if this is your thing, you'll know it. But if I haven't told you it, you know, if you can't pick up from what I've said, uh, you should know whether or not this is going to be something that you'll like. I've told you everything. Everything you need to know to like the show. If you feel like something's missing, I'm sorry. But it's all there. There's there's nothing else missing. This is That's what the show is about. So enjoy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.